Hello and welcome to another Cambrian Facebook Live. Well, I say Facebook Live, we're actually streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, it's uh, lovely to have you joining here. And uh, yes, we have Dave Newton with us as well. Hello, Dave, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. I'm very well, thank you. A little bit uh, frazzled because of rushing around getting this set up, which is why we are 10 minutes late, for which I <laughs> sincerely apologize. I could give you a multitude of reasons, and the one I'm going to go with is that Otis was not behaving, uh, but I'm hoping you okay. can be better soon. I'm lying, <laughs> of course, but I'm totally blaming Otis because he can't tell me any different. Yeah, it's, it's easier to do that as well, isn't it? Exactly. Blame an animal, right? You have a blame hound. Every time you break wind, you blame the dog. <laughs> That's the only reason why I got a dog, I think. Yeah, it's, just, it's one of the best reasons, I feel. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Dave, I'm not... I'm, I, I'm, excited because not only do we have you back because i'm excited about that because we've had you in before uh, with the uh with the printing that we did before with print studio yep. Pro and everything it was absolutely amazing um we've also get to see otis as well which is going to be brilliant uh so yes uh because in the other video that we did with, with him printing, we, we tried to get him sort of involved on the camera and he just wasn't having any of it so, he totally wasn't having you know, it at all <laughs> and then you said you were excited about well. seeing Otis. I thought you were excited about seeing this. Yes, this that's the third thing. I was, I, was, I was saving the best till last. Well, I should have saved you till last then, shouldn't I? <laughs> well, no, my, you've still got my other half to go. Be careful. She is sitting here. She's going to be dog oh, trainer yeah. extraordinaire. So make sure she's <laughs> the last one. Oh yeah, no, definitely, yeah, uh, yes. But we have the uh, you have the R five with you as well, which is uh, and you you're going to you're going to show off some of the things uh, that, uh, that it does. I'm yeah, really looking forward to, uh, to that. And uh, so you have a uh, you have a dog assistant with you today. That's going to. Be I have a dog you. assistant. Let me let me show you. Here we go. Uh, so we've got <laughs> Otis is here looking really <laughs> ready to roll this is, is. Uh, this is otis being absolutely uh yeah i mean if he stayed like this the whole time as long as he opened his eyes i'd probably be ha quite happy about that uh, and then obviously we've got my other half here so dog assistant dog training assistant this is my other half jess uh, she is going to act as our uh well she's going to try and cajole otis into doing various <laughs> different things that's the plan well, I'm sure everyone's give a, going to give a warm welcome to Otis and Jess for helping out with this video as well. So let the uh, uh, let the comments come in and uh, show that through as well, everyone that's watching live. Um, if you are watching live, if you can uh, just give this live stream a share as well to spread uh, what we're actually doing here. So hit that share button uh, and let's get the word out about this, uh, this live that we're doing. So, uh, yeah. Without uh, any further sort of delays, Dave, are you ready to rock and roll? Are you ready to do I this? am. I'm, I'm, I'd say I'm always ready to rock and roll, but I just disproved that. No, I'm ready <laughs> to go. We're all good. That's brilliant. Always ready to rock and roll. Fantastic. So, uh, obviously, if, if you've got any questions, everyone, uh, just uh, pop them into the comments. Anything that's relevant at the time, uh, I'll just quickly jump back in and uh, interrupt Dave with a question. Uh, if not, don't worry, we'll save uh, some questions to the end as well. So we will get to all of the questions that dropped in the comments. Uh, I'll hand over to Dave. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you very much. Right, well, uh, as Paul said, good afternoon, everyone. Those of you that are joining live, thank you very much. Those of you that watched my last live and have come back again, you must be gluttons for punishment, but thank you for joining. I'm sure you're really here to see either the R5 or Otis. Uh, it's got nothing to do with me. Uh, but yes, please, if you've got questions, fire them into the comments box uh, and Paul will interrupt me or we'll deal with them at the end. So this session is all about photographing pets uh, and uh, we are obviously going to be using Otis uh, as our pet subject today. And I've got the R5, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to talk you through some of the cool features, most notably um, the resolution and the autofocus. So we'll be looking at the eye autofocus, eye tracking, particularly as it relates to animals, because we have a specific animal setting. Uh, and I'll probably talk a bit about flash. Um, and I will give you tips on photographing animals. And in fact, we've got uh, two different shooting environments set up. So one of them will be kind of natural light, which is the one you saw. I'm going to show you again now. Uh, so that'd be, that'd be this one here. Uh, so hello. 
So this sofa that we have in front of the big windows here, they provide quite nice soft light. Uh, I'm going to crouch down here because that's a really awkward position. Um, they provide lovely soft light coming through, so that's a really good space for us to photograph Otis in. We then have, if I show you the other side, you can sort of see it past the flash here. Uh, we have a chair, and I've even, even gone to the level here. Look, I'll, I'll walk over here. Hello? Um, no, you still can't see me. I'm out of the frame. There we go. You must be able to see me now. Uh, we've even got a background up over here as well, so I'll talk a little bit about backgrounds or using, uh, using a wall. Um, basically finding places to shoot where you can photograph your pets inside. I would love to do this outside, um, but uh, the vagaries of the internet mean that that's not really possible in a reliable fashion. Uh, so we're inside, but if you've got questions about outside, as I said, you just fire away uh, and I will do my best to answer them in a theoretical sense without actually being able to demonstrate them. Right, let me come back here because I need to talk to you. Specifically here, there we go, right. So, I told you I've got the R5 to give you the top line spec of the R5. For those of you that are curious, uh, we've got 45 megapixels, we've got 12 frames a second with mechanical shutter, we've got up to 20 frames a second with electronic shutter, uh, we've got um, combined image stabilization, lens, uh, and in-body or in-camera stabilization, giving up to eight stops. From a movie perspective, you've got 8K raw, internal recording, those of you that are interested in the video perspective. Um, to do that though, remember you are gonna need a CF Express card. Dual card slots, very key. Uh, lots of people wanted dual card slots, now you've got it, it's one SD, one CF Express. Um, and then we've got the autofocus, and that's really what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, gonna try somehow, I'm gonna figure this out as we go, to try and see if I can show you what the eye tracking autofocus looks like uh, when we photograph Otis. So that's the camera bit done um, in terms of the specs, the boring dull specs bit. Um, the rest of it will come out as, as I'm shooting, I guess. And as I say, I'll, I'll demonstrate some flash to you as well. Uh, so if you're interested in using flash for anything, it doesn't have to be pets, um, you'll pick up some flash tips too. So hopefully that sounds like a good uh, place to start. And the number one tip I am going to give you for photographing pets is to make sure you have, as they get handed to me, treats. You need the treats that they want. That is literally the biggest secret to photographing pets. In the same way, if you're training a pet, you need to have the treats that are gonna make them do what you wanna do. Well, if you want them to sit in the right place so you can take pictures of them, uh, treats is where it's at. Now, they do say uh, never work with children and animals. I'm not sure what they said about working with children and animals live, and even more so, I'm not sure what they said about working with child animals live. I have a feeling this is like a whole level of complexity. The great thing is, anything could happen. It could go incredibly wrong. Otis could just sleep, which is what he's doing right now. He could just sit here and sleep the whole time, or he may wake up and go absolutely bananas. Um, but hopefully that'll be part of the fun, uh, because you'll see that even in the... Uh, even in the world of the quote unquote professional photographer, things don't go to plan all the time uh, and you have to work with the situation in which you find yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna hand the treats back to Jess. Uh, we're gonna get away from this camera angle. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just generically talk, as I move some lights back out of the way, we're gonna generically talk about this environment. Now I said that we've got this window light here. You'll notice we've got shutters. It means that we can adjust the light here if I come down here look at that it means that we can adjust the light uh, coming in to suit now a really good tip if you don't want to go to flash if you're um, looking for a nice simple way of getting lovely light try and avoid anything too contrasty so look for what we would call areas of open shade now admittedly this big pole here has a big light on top of it um, it's firing up into the corner there that's mostly so that you can see me when I was talking to the other camera. Really, it's just a big expense of light to light me because I'm that vain. I'm joking. Um, I might not be joking, who knows. Um, but with these shutters, I can obviously open and close them to let more or less light in. But it means that this area where Jess and Otis are sitting, I can create what we might call open shade. Uh, and that's somewhere where, from an exposure perspective, everything's gonna be really easy and uh, just from a lighting perspective, you're not going to have too much in the way of 
um, contrasty light across the face. So as a starting point, it works really well. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab the camera. I'm gonna move a couple of camera inputs around so that you can still see this whilst also seeing uh, what happens on the computer. So bear with me a moment. Uh, I'm gonna take a picture here uh, and hope that it appears over there, uh, which it should do. There we go, it did. Fabulous. So what we're gonna have, uh, you've got this. I'm going to show you my computer, uh, which is here. Uh, don't worry about the fact that it's a white screen. Um, let me get rid of that. Oh, go away. No, there we go. So you've got a white screen for the moment. Uh, and what I need to do Isn't that magic? So now you can see what's happening here and you can see what happens uh, when I take a picture. So step one is going to be uh, that we need to wake Otis up. Okay, so uh, Oates, what you got? We're gonna wave a treat at him. And we're gonna see, oh, there we go, right. Hello buddy, how you doing? You good? So Otis is a nine month old Hungarian Vishla. Um, he is remarkably calm for a Vishla. Any of you that have a visual will know quite how crazy they can be. Now, I'm going to be shooting in uh, manual because that's the way that I like to shoot. Uh, ignore the fact that that's a white background for the moment. And I'm just going to take a picture straight off. There we go. Otis, hey pups. He's very good. Uh, I just want to get a picture on the screen. There we go. Right. Okay, so we've put a picture on screen. Now that looks a lot better. There we go. Right. So I'm going to get Jess to stand up. We're going to try and move Otis into this corner. And he actually, his fur works quite well uh, against this uh, thing. In fact, you can stay where he is. Because right, right. um, the light background is quite nice. Now, normally I try and get rid of that very bright background. But actually, it gives quite a lovely, soft, open feel. It's very lifestyle-y. Um, in terms of lens, I'm shooting with the RF 35mm uh, 1.8. Um, I've got two other lenses with me uh, here. I've got a 50mm 1.2 RF, and I've also got a 100mm macro, and we'll see how we get on. We'll probably flick between them, uh, I guess, to see what's happening. But uh, tip number two for pet photography, uh, as I try and untangle myself from a cable, is that you want to be at their level. Um, you, you can photograph pets from below. It's very uncommon. You can photograph pets from up here, and it can sometimes work. But as a start point... You want to be at your pet's level because then you create really intimate pictures. Now, if you don't want to get down on the floor, um, if you don't want to get down on the floor, then um, you can uh, use the flip out screen. So if you've got a bad back, for example, you know, the very angle screen is something that I absolutely love. Uh, it makes life so much better. Oh, just down. There we go. Do you see? Now there's treats involved. Otis knows exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Now, look down. Oh, 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 no, not me. I don't need kisses. You see how you can go from uh, from very placid Wait. to incredibly uh, awake all of a sudden. Now, I'm shooting wide open here. I've got my ISO set to 500. I'm at 160 per second because Otis is going to be moving around. I want to try and keep that shutter speed up a little bit. This is not about avoiding camera shake as much as trying to freeze him uh, from, from being too, uh, too mobile. Uh, right, Otis. Down a bit, down a bit, down a bit. Oh, there you go. Now, um, one thing, when we, when we train Otis, we often use a clicker. And as far as he's concerned, the sound of the shutter is a clicker. Uh, so when I take a picture, he seems to think that that's his cue for getting a treat. So obviously I'm trying to focus on his eye, uh, and we do need to be very patient. There you go, good boy. Need to be very patient uh, to um, try and uh, wait for that moment. We're looking for connection. We're looking for eye contact. We want the eye to be in focus. And this is where um, the eye tracking focus on the R5 for animals is really, really good. Uh, and in fact, I'm gonna try and demonstrate it to you in a slightly unconventional manner. 
So I'm actually just going to plug this cable in here and take it out from somewhere else. Uh, so I just need to adjust a feed because then you may be able to see, he says hopefully, if I take this HDMI cable here, uh, if I plug that in there, oh, look at this. Okay, so I'm now going to give you, I'm just going to give you camera two for a little bit. Okay, so this one is, uh, it's a little bit awkward. I don't have a huge amount of movement. Sorry, that's going to feel slightly seasicky. Um, and it's slightly rotated here. Let's shoot it this way. Uh, okay, so what you can see is I've got uh, an AF box. Now we're in, uh, if I show you the, um, if I show you the settings, I have got the uh, AF method set to face tracking. Uh, I've got eye focus enabled. And here in the menu, if I come to the AF menu, I have selected, it'll come back, I've selected subject to detect to be animals. So this is where it's hopefully going to pick up Otis's face. So I've moved this point around. Um, and the advantage of this is I can pick a point for it to start focusing from. Now when he's, wait. So you can see now how the AF point is picking up his eye. Even if I, if I bring this down, it still jumps to his eye because it's detecting that eye. There you go, even side on. Now the advantage of this is if I was shooting well, as I am shooting wide open, if I can get him to look at me, um, so I'm going to ask Jess to just hold a treat over the top of the camera. Wait. There we go. Wait, Otis. Wait. Wait. Come here. Wait, wait. What I get? Oh, wait. oh, that was me being too slow. Otis. Oh, honestly. Sit. Wait, wait. Okay, so he's looking at me. Now, wait. where's the eye? Here we go. Wait, wait. The challenge you often face wait. Oh dear, wait. Wait. is that you may end up getting the nose, uh, and that's no good if you're shooting wide open. So here, like, I can force it onto the nose wait. Wait. if he stops moving. Wait. Just wait. But it still wants to find that eye. Oh, that was a bit slow there. Wait. There we go. Wait. So this is the eye focusing, and obviously, as I said before, um, let me let me get. Oh, come on, let's appear here. I think he was moving a bit too much, but hopefully, there we go. Right, we got a blurry one, and then it's not the greatest picture in the world, um, but uh, it's at least uh, indicative of of how that eye focusing works. Now, is it perfect? Uh, it's not perfect, but it is a, an awful lot better than it used to be. So. Tip number one, that was, that was r 5 e stuff, but from a general photographic perspective, tip number one was have treats. Tip number two is make sure you get down to their level. Now, I'm a big fan in terms of lenses, of shooting with prime lenses for this kind of stuff. I think it gives a lovely look. It allows you to shoot wide open. So I'm just going to switch this lens over because 35 is nice, but it's probably a bit too wide uh, for the space that I've got. Um, if, he was, if he was a bit more settled, if he wasn't quite so bonkers wild at the moment, moving his head around, uh, I would probably find it slightly easier to frame something up nicely with that couch or sofa and the, uh, and the windows behind. But as it is, he's kind of moving a bit too much, making it a little bit challenging uh, for me. So I'm gonna to go to something longer uh, and I'm gonna be looking for, as I said, this kind of open light, lovely soft lighting. I'm just going to the screen if you wonder where I'm looking. We're getting a little bit of, uh, we're getting a little bit of crop on your side. You're getting a what? So, uh, a little bit of cropping on your stream, so it's very hard to see in the corner. Hard to see where the... Uh, where you are. We're, we're just getting oh. the image. Oh, right. I'm, I'm here. Can you see me now? Uh, no, I can see a hand. <laughs> huh. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, fine. So what we'll do is we'll just come back to here. Now, can you see me? Brilliant. There you go. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Uh, right. So I am, I'm going to switch lenses. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm just going to take the 35 off. 
Uh, now, with the R and the R5, uh, there is a little, um, there's a shutter that comes down. So I always recommend turning the camera off first. Then you get a little shutter that moves in front of the, uh, in front of the sensor uh, and protects it from dust, uh, which is ever so convenient. So I've switched now to the 50mm 1.2 uh, here, which is a beast of a lens, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I, I entirely love this lens. Um, it's probably one of my favourites. Uh, I'm going to make sure that EOS Utility is still working, uh, which it will be in just a moment. There we go, remote shooting, perfect. Okay, and I'm now going to give you, once again, uh, I'll give you this view. I hope nobody was feeling too seasick about this. Um, and because I've got a bit more field of view, slightly narrower field of view, let me get rid of that. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to shoot, I'm actually going to make this wide open at 1.2 because then we'll really be able to see uh, about focusing. And what I want is his, his nose, his snout to be out of focus um, while his eyes sharp. I think that's going to be uh, a really lovely look. So Wait, wait. Let me just wait. There we go. Right, here we go. Wait. Wait. Can we get him to look towards me a little bit more? So if you can... Wait. Just don't reach, Otis. Wait. So you notice he stood up, so wait. I'm now trying to come up wait. to him. Wait. Got your hand in it. Sorry. It's okay. Wait. Here we go. That's the one. That's what I was looking for. Right, here we go. Look at that. So now we've got the snout uh, nice and soft and fuzzy, uh, and we've got uh, his eye absolutely razor sharp. I think actually I'd like to try and get this into a vertical uh, vertical shape if I can. Now you may notice uh, that I am using, um, this is gonna be slightly awkward for you to look at because it's rotated. Um, I am using, uh, oh, I oh, quite like that actually, that's quite fun. A little bit of snout action. Wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm I'm actually not shooting through the viewfinder. I'm shooting on the. Well, I'm not shooting on very angle screen. I'm actually shooting on the HDMI out, which is on the TV behind me, wait. which is slightly awkward. Um, but I'm shooting with AI servo, uh, and that's giving me the option, wait. the just, ability for Otis to move around a little bit and me to still uh, track him. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, he's diving at the camera now. Wait, 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 wait. There's a lot of waiting going on. He's feeling very upset about this. Wait, wait. Oh, come on, wait. pick it up. Where's he got to? Um, Otis, would you stop moving? You're making my life very hard. Wait. Here we go, there we go. There we go, that one, no, next one, one after that maybe. Uh, it'll come in in a second. I think that might be it. Uh, oh no, there it is. That's what I was looking for. That lovely contact in the eyes, nice and sharp in the eyes, uh, the snout out of focus uh, and, and, uh, and, and some nice lighting. So this is that open shade feel. Um, we've got this, you know, it's, it's nice and flattering uh, on his face. We don't have hard shadows anywhere. Uh, he, is he bring him down. There we go. Um, it's, it's nice and flattering on his face without any hard shadows. Wait, wait. Let me just wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, no, definitely missed one of them there. Definitely missed one of them, but I think one of them jumped in as being good. There we go. We've got another nose. Uh, and then I think we jump back to the eye. Uh, almost no, still on the nose there. One of them looked good. Now this is the frustration of uh, photographing pets. Uh, it takes time and patience. Wait. Uh, and it, it certainly helps. Wait. Oh. No, just wait. Wait. Wait, Poppy, wait. 
Good boy. It certainly helps if you have another pair of hands. Right, give that a second. Uh, that was into, that one's entirely me. Uh, and then he should hopefully turn around at some point when he's moved his position. And here we go. Come on, come on. It's taking its time to send the files over. Come on, come on. No, that's not something. Right. Okay. Now, that's this is how we've started. We've uh, we've begun with um, basically. Uh, oh, what we're we looking at there. Uh, we've begun with. Uh, you can hopefully see me here. There we go. So we've begun with just this open shade, um, open light in here. And the, the, the first part of this is looking at the environment that you've got to shoot in and deciding where the light is, deciding uh, what it looks like uh, and, and what you want the pictures to look like. So we've begun with open ambient light, uh, no, no flashlight or anything. And now we're going to move on and we're going to have a little look at some flash as well. Uh, so I won't be able to show you the live view through the camera because uh, I can't demonstrate flash that way, but you'll be able to see the pictures coming up. Uh, so let me uh, move some things around. And what you'll see, I don't want to scare you all, uh, this thing is coming up later, so don't, don't worry about this. Right, now there goes my reflector. Um, don't worry about this for the moment. I'm just going to bring this very much out of the way here. So you've got... You've got this this here, okay? So we're going to get Otis into this chair. Uh, and people say, well, what kind of background should you have? Well, you can try and go with something that matches your subject, or you can go with something that clashes. I actually really like Otis against this throw. Uh, I think the textures work quite well together, and the colours work quite well together. And if you're going to do uh, maybe a black and white conversion, maybe I'll even shoot in black and white in a moment. If you're going to do that, it's a really nice look. And in terms of the background itself behind me here, um, what you can see is I've got something again that's a similar color. I've actually, this one I think is the vintage olive background from Last of Light. The, the other side of it is actually much closer to Otis's uh, color, but we're going to go with the greener color today. And in terms of flash, uh, we're going to start with just a single flash. And in fact, I'm even going to take this off because I don't want to scare you all off with, with lots of... Uh, Lots of bits and pieces. So we'll start without this. This is a, a Speedlight 600EX. And this is going to provide our light. Okay. So what you'll notice here is I have a lovely white wall. You may notice here it's a white wall. So I'm going to bounce light from this wall to begin with. I might actually demonstrate straight off with flash just firing directly at Otis so that you can see the effect uh, and why it's not that pretty. Otis is getting upset now. Otis wants another treat. He's sitting on the sofa looking at Jess with the box of treats. Uh, so uh, I'll show you why we don't want direct light and why we move into bounce light and then why we might maybe move into uh, diffusers for larger light sources or reflectors uh, and that kind of thing. So if there are any questions, Paul, uh, now is probably a good time while I'm manoeuvring things around. I'll take your silence as a no. Either that or you've we gone for a coffee break. <laughs> oh no, I'm here. And we're doing okay for questions at the moment. Uh, we, we did have a fairly involved I think we might leave at the end, which was, uh, well, I'll, I'll jump in now and then maybe we can uh, uh, we can talk about it while you move into the brand. Go on then. I'm getting a lot of reverb from my, from my my own sound. My own Have you sound. lost your mic? Is it unplugged? Uh, no, it's still here. All good. All right. Okay. So we had a question from Trish on Facebook uh, saying, uh, can you give me three good reasons why I to change from food and then for wildlife photography? <laughs> like I said, it was a fairly involved one. Sorry, did you say three good reasons why to change from Fuji to Canon? Yeah. Um, Trish, <laughs> three good reasons. Um, autofocus, uh, low light performance, and uh, lens choice. 
I don't know, that, that, that's not a very involved answer, but they'd be the first three things off the top of my head. Uh, I think the autofocus performance of Canon is better than Fuji. Certainly the lens choice is wider, particularly if you're looking for wildlife type lenses. Um, and, uh, and yeah, um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, downsides. If you've bought a Fuji, you probably bought a Fuji because you wanted it to be really, really small and lightweight and compact. Uh, and the trouble is if you go to a Canon full frame mirrorless, uh, it's going to be bigger. So your system as a whole will be bigger, uh, just to give you the complete downside. Um, if you went for the Canon APS-C mirrorless, so you'd be looking at the M range, uh, they would probably be smaller than Fuji and you'd be able to use all of the EF lenses. Uh, AF's a little bit different. I think it's probably on par um, it would be dependent on, on the handling. For me, I think the handling of Canon cameras is better than anything else out there. And actually, if you're doing wildlife, maybe that's a fourth reason. The handling really works for me. I find it quick and intuitive, uh, and I can move my way around menus and buttons in the right place. That said, that's totally and utterly subjective. Um, if you're really happy with Fuji, stick with Fuji, because if you love using that camera, you will get better pictures with it, simply because you'll use it more. Uh, and, and I've said this so many times to people when they say, oh, what camera should I buy? This, this one, that one, or something else. Buy the camera that you love to hold, because if you don't love holding it, you won't take it out and you won't use it very often, and then your pictures will not improve because you won't be putting in the practice. If you've got a camera that you love having in your hands, a camera that, that works in the way that makes sense to you, you will use it time and time again, and simply by practice, by making mistakes and learning from them, you'll get better pictures. And I realize this is the weirdest way for me to answer this question, because I'm on my knees looking <laughs> at the camera. <laughs> um, but hopefully that answered your question for you. Trish was listening. Uh, thank you uh, thank very much for that. Yes, uh, very yeah. uh, And obviously, if you want to come in to the store and try any of the cameras uh, that we have in stock, you also do that as well. There we go. Perfect. Right. I've actually just uh, I've moved this around now, uh, so it's all good. We're ready for Otis. You'll see I've got my flash gun over here. Uh, it's going to be a it's remote flash. Uh, what I'm going to try and do, I'm not going to bounce it to begin with. I'm just going to go with a direct flash firing into here. Uh, I'm hoping that my EOS utility has picked up again. Uh, that would be good. And then I will be able to show you uh, once more the pictures as they arrive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Jess to get Otis up and over here while I change a camera over. Um, I'll leave you with this last one that we took here. Uh, and I need to take that one. Here. And hopefully, if I do that now, uh, so this is the camera. So if you stand this side, there we go. I have to remind Jess where the camera is. Um, so, Paul, just let me know. Can we, you we see did. me from this camera? Uh, so you, you're quite small in. in uh, I think maybe our streaming service is probably. I'll do this. There you go. Yeah, and also your sound changed quite a bit recently, just when you switched. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, let me see. The joys of live, everyone. Oh, absolutely, the joys of live. Hang on a second. Uh, that would be this. Uh, so, how's the sound now? Uh, the same. <laughs> we can <laughs> still hear you. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, uh, hang on. How about the sound now? A better. Way better, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, good to go. There we go. Perfect. Right. Look at that. Live, hey? Live and animals. Right. So I've got um, direct flash firing Otis. I'm going to have no flash exposure compensation. And what I want initially is I want to make sure that the picture that I'm taking has no ambient light in here. So I am going to make sure, uh, I'm just going to take a picture, I'm hoping it'll be black, it should be, uh, with no ambient light. 
Uh, and let's have a look. Uh, let's go in here. Right. Uh, let's turn the ISO down to 100. We're going to make the shutter speed a little bit faster. It's all going to be nice and dark. Uh, and uh, the reason for this is quite simple. Oh, I just, there we go. Um, he moved. It's okay. Uh, right, the reason for that, there we go. Let me give you a black picture. Look at that. It's basically black. The reason for that is so you can see what effect the flash uh, is having in this picture. Oh, Otis, that was almost perfect. There you go. Come on. Come on. Wait. Oh, let's try and I need to get more better here. So if you stand slightly behind me, there we are. No, Otis, you sit there. Yeah, I'm going to give you, you need this view again so that you can see what, no, you don't, you want this view. Sorry. There we go. Right. Now he's being somewhat awkward. Oh, there we go. Oh, Otis. It's like he kind of knows what he's supposed to do, but he doesn't really want to do it. There we go. We got we got a picture straight straight away. Uh, okay, this is why we don't use direct light. Can you see that shadow falling behind him? Also, the background's very dark. So all I'm going to do, if I can demonstrate this to you now, we'll come back here. If I can get Jess to go over this side a little bit. I'm taking this flash gun here, and instead of pointing it directly at him, I'm going to point it off this white wall, okay? Now, we will still get shadow, but it should, should be softer. Right, here we go. And come on, wait for it to arrive. There it is. Okay, so we've still got contrast, we've still got shadow, but that shadow is not as deep. The light is softer. Now we can definitely improve this. Uh, step one for improving this might be to take our reflector, uh, which is here, uh, and uh, here we go. I'll give you this so you can see what's happening. Now I'm just gonna take a reflector here. Wait. Otis is gonna get scared by it, of course he is. That's entirely what's gonna happen. Come on, Oates, up there. There's a good boy. Oh. And I'm going to try and push a little bit of the light that comes off this wall back in to Otis. Wait, Otis, wait. Wait, wait. Oh, there you go. I'd like him to sit. Here we go, Otis. That's good. Good job. Good job. Wait, wait. Otis, wait. Oh, no. Lie down. Lie down. Come on. Unfortunately, Otis is actually not being quite as compliant as he usually is. Here we go. Let's give you this one. There we go. So now we've put a little bit of light back into this side, this unlit side of Otis. Here we go. So you're picking up a little bit more light. Now, in an ideal world, I wouldn't bounce the light. Bouncing the light's okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. We're going to go back to uh, directly lighting him here. But uh, we've got a larger light source. And so the whole point about this is that, uh, what are you looking at at the moment? Oh, you probably need to be looking at this, don't you? There we go. Uh, the whole point about this is that you, um, you want to create as large a light source as you possibly can. And that's why I've got the big one behind me. So... When we talk about light, we can talk about the intensity of light, which is its brightness, but we can also talk about the quality of light as to whether it's hard or soft light. And soft light is created by a larger light source. So making this bigger than the flash means the light wraps more around the subject, uh, and therefore you end up with softer looking light. Now, I'm also gonna bring this light a little bit more front because of where Otis is tending to sit. Uh, I'm not going to use the reflector for this one because uh, we're going to see how it goes. And I'm going to try and get Jess to just make him look a little bit this way. There we go. So she's going to bring the treat down. Oh, 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 oh. Wait. 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 Oh, sit still. 
wait, wait, I just wait. Wait, wait, I just wait, wait. Good boy. Now, what you'll see is that it's still, not that one, there we go, that's the one I was looking for, it's still quite contrasty because this is still not a massive light source. And also, the background's really dark. It's not the nicest looking picture. So, round the back, I have another flash gun, and I'm gonna use that to light the background, which is gonna give us a bit more depth in the scene. So that is, if I can show you, down behind the chair here, there's another flash gun sitting on the floor, and that's just going to light the background. So. When, I'm, when I talk about flash, I always like to tell people to work from the background forward. So I'm just gonna take a picture um, and guesstimate uh, the, oh, come back. Guesstimate the power, uh, which somewhere around there. I'm not overly interested in Otis at the moment. But what we've got is kind of a bit of a halo hotspot. Uh, and that's because I put a grid on it, which I don't need. There we go, right. So that should be about right. So I'm working from the background forwards. I'm just gonna see what the background looks like. Uh, and I'm hoping, there we go, that looks not too bad. Okay, so the background's good. I've now just got to get Otis in place and get the light on him from here. Now, actually, he seems to be more intent, because Jess is standing that side, he seems to be more intent on looking that way. So I'm going to light him from that side in the hope, in the hope that it gives a better looking result. And it helps if I turn that light on. There we go. Wait, Yeah, wait. Oh, so close. Wait, wait. Now we're still trying to work on our composition, of course. I think actually that background light's too bright, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit. We're still thinking about our composition, uh, and we're still uh, trying to find a nice flow in the picture. So I'm looking for where Otis's uh, snout is pointing. I'm looking for where his eye is positioned in the frame. Um, And I think I'm going to put a bit more light from the uh, from the front light because actually, well, actually what I'm going to do is raise it up slightly because he keeps looking up and therefore the light's kind of scooting underneath him. Uh, so here we go. There we go. Now we're getting there. So you see, we've put some light in the background. Um, I could play around with that, but we've got actually quite a nice feel to this picture. Oh, has got light in his eye. Um, we've got a nice bit of light on one side of his face. We're a bit dark on the other side of his face, um, if I'm entirely honest. So what I might do now is if I could get him in much the same position, I'm gonna try and hold a reflector so that you can see I've got this one here, I've got the light in the background, I'm gonna try and hold a reflector on this side and push some light back in. There won't be a lot because this has got a grid on it, so it's controlling the spill, uh, but it's definitely worth a try. So, it's a bit of a juggling act. Wait, 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 Otis, wait. Good boy. Wait, wait, wait. Otis, down. Sorry, that was entirely my fault. Otis, down. Good wait. boy, Otis. First one was good, second one the flash didn't go because I was a bit too fast. Oh, no. Wait, 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 Otis, wait, wait. Sit back. Honestly, children and animals, there we go. Right, let me show you that one when that arrives. Here we go, here we go. So now you see where I've positioned that light on the left-hand side, it's just skimming over the top of his snout. So we're getting that highlight in the other eye. Uh, and this is where the lighting becomes really interesting. You can see enough of the, the, the right-hand eye 
and you've got light coming over the top of the snout, creating what, if Rembrandt could paint a dog or had painted a dog, that would probably be Rembrandt lighting on, on a dog. I think that's, that's probably what I might call that. Um, we've got that nice halo behind. Uh, it's giving quite a lovely feel to it. You see with the shallow depth of field shooting wide open at 1.2, um, you see that we've got that lovely feel with these eyes sharp and everything else just kind of blending away. The texture of that, um, of that throw on the armchair really helping. The colors are kind of muted, uh, but all complementary. So they all work together very nicely. Now I'm gonna take a couple more uh, like this uh, and hopefully they will appear as I take them. Uh, we'll see if we can't get anything better. Wait, 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 down, wait, 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 Wait. There we go. Hopefully as they're coming in, there we go. You're seeing a couple of those come in now. This one, uh, that one there, there we go. That's the one I was looking for. Light in both eyes. We've got that lovely snout coming forwards. The background's soft, but there's enough light in there uh, without it being too dark. It's giving us a good, uh, a good contrast. Uh, and, you know, not, I mean, it seems super complex because we're working with an animal that's not being the most compliant. Um, but actually, uh, it's not the hardest thing in the world. Now, to demonstrate, uh, we're going to take this little one away now. I'm going to take this light away. And because we're getting close to running out of time and I'm conscious of wanting to leave time for Q&A at the end, uh, I'm going to move this little light source. I'll put the reflector over here. And we're going to bring in the very big light source. Uh, we're going to put it in much the same place. Uh, which is here. Um, it's quite large, it's right in his face, but what you'll see, the whole point of this is that we're getting uh, a very nice soft light, hopefully, that's the plan. Um, I'm almost making sure there's no space for Jess to be able to stand. Um, I've got a feeling, yeah, Jess, if you come around here uh, and just kind of under here. Now, a lot of people will take a, take a light and they'll put it up really high, but obviously I want it to be at about the height uh, that Otis is at. I want the light in his face. Um, that's that's the goal. Sit, wait, 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 Otis, wait, wait. Oh, that's quite nice. Uh, I do just need the reflector uh, to come back in over here. Now there is a white wall here and you would think that would kick quite a lot of light back in, but because I've put the reflector in, sorry, because I've put the uh, softbox in close, um, you're not getting as much light falling past Otis, uh, which is why I have to bring the reflector in and actually bring that in close as well. Because if the light doesn't fire past him, um, then it's not really gonna give an awful lot lie back down. off. Lie down, lie down. Come on. Lie down, lie down, down. Lie down, wait, 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 Otis, wait. That was almost perfect. Almost perfect. Otis in the chair. Come on. Come on, buddy. <laughs> he knows. He's like, oh, there's a treat on the floor. Otis, come in. Otis. Otis, come in. Come in. In. Lie down. Normally, the irony is that he loves this chair and we can't get him out of it. And, and right now, we can't get him into it. Wait. 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 Otis, wait. Wait. Oh, there we go. Wait. That's the Otis. There we go, puppy. Come on. Puppy, wait, wait, wait. He's <laughs> now trying to sniff the lens. Lie down, lie down. I'm just persevering here, and this is a key tip for pet photography, is perseverance. Just in the chair, um, in the chair. In. Come on, lie down. Good boy. Um, there we go. Oh, um, because I just down. want to get. Lie down. Nope. Otis, wait, wait. Wait. Oh, so close. Lie down. Lie down. Lie That's down. it. Otis, no. No, no, no. 
Honestly, if you could see this at the moment, you're just seeing a screen. So I'm going to make sure that you can now see this here. Uh, where are we? Camera one. There you go. You want this? Otis is just in and out of this chair, backwards and forwards. Um, it's 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 quite. He's, he's stuck because he didn't want to stand on the reflector. Can I go? On. In, pop, in, lie down, lie down. Come on. There we go. Right, Otis, down. Can I have a treat, please? Thank you. Oh, Otis. Lie down. What's this? Down. Wait. Let's just wait. Taking the treat, putting it on the lens. Let's just wait. Wait. Oh, he might have blinked. Wait. Wait. Oh. Lie down. Lie down. Come on. There wait. we go. Lie down. <laughs> <laughs> He's just cleaning himself. Lie down. Lie down. Last one, Otis, I promise. And then you can have all the treats in the world. All the treats in the world. Uh, so I guess the proof is it doesn't always go to plan. Oh, Otis, what's this? what's this? Sit. Good boy. Down. Now wait. Otis, wait. wait. No, no, take that away. Take that away. Otis, watch. Watch. Wait. Here. Wait. He now looks just thoroughly annoyed with me. I just, where is it? There we go. We got it. We got there in the end. There's a good boy. Well done. Let me bring that up on screen because uh, I think we got there in the end. Look at that. There we go. Right. Uh, <laughs> At the risk of Otis getting really annoyed with me and being com becoming ever less compliant, uh, I am going to uh, wrap this up right now. I'm going to give you a little bit of a um, trying to figure out which camera I need to be on. Uh, that'd be this one right here. I'm going to give you a little summation of what we talked about, uh, of what you <laughs> sort of saw when Otis was vaguely behaving, uh, and then we will do Q and A. So, tip number one: treats. Get the treats that your pet really, really, really loves and will hopefully do anything for. Uh, two, get to their eye level. If you can get down to their eye level, use the flip out screen if you've got one um, or, or just sit down low with them, you get far more intimate pictures. Focus on the eyes, uh, unless you want to do like with a dog, the classic boop shot that they've got a long snout like Otis. Focus on the nose, uh, get that classic boop. Uh, or um, yeah, focus on the eyes and use uh, servo or tracking focus because they will move around. Unless they're incredibly well behaved, they're not just going to sit still. Look for the eye contact. Um, you're going to focus on the eyes. So look for that time when you've got eye contact uh, to create that intimate feel. And by being down at their level, it feels very much like you're in their world or the viewer is in their world. You create empathy uh, and a level of interaction that's quite lovely in a pet picture. Think of your lighting. If you're going to use ambient light, um, look for areas of, of open shadow or open shade where you've got nice soft lighting. You can, by all means, use contrasty lighting. You just have to think a bit more about it. And in which case, you're going to think more about shadows and how they're going to fall. And maybe you're going to bring a shadow in as part of your composition. Having said composition, don't forget your composition. Think about where the snout's pointing, where are the eyes looking, how is the flow of the picture. You have to work quickly because they do move uh, and it can be very frustrating, but it's also hugely rewarding. Um, if you're not going to use ambient light, then flash can work really well. Uh, remember, small light sources are hard. Bounced light is softer. Big light sources close in are softer still. Think about a reflector. Think about your background as well. Uh, and in terms of your aperture, obviously anything goes. Personally, I like shooting pretty wide open uh, to give that soft, fuzzy feel. Uh, but if you want something where you've got a bit more in focus, tip of the snout through to the eyes, then you're probably going to close that down to, I don't know, maybe 16 or 18 or move further away from your subject, uh, which is the other trick because depth of field is controlled not just by aperture, but by how near or far you are from your subject. Uh, and I guess that's pretty much everything, I think. I'm going to move a light out of the way because I'm worried it's going to get in the way of me hearing Paul asking any questions that there may be. Uh, and uh, yeah, Paul, fire away and I'll see if I can hear you. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay? I can. 
Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, uh, big thank you. I think the thing that I took away from that is that when I've been trying to take pictures of my little pooch is this, uh, that I just don't give enough time into uh, the actual shooting. So uh, as you've seen here live, uh, obviously the, the perseverance in in the photography with with pets is is definitely the key uh, to go forward really uh, yes a couple of questions in from in from youtube uh we had let's just find them here so we had uh what's that thingy oh. Uh, on top of the camera. So I'm, I'm guessing they're referring to when we were using uh, the flash and how we were triggering the, uh, the flash system. This thing here? I, uh, yep. So this, this is the Canon flash transmitter. It's called the STE3. Uh, this allows me to remote control my flash guns. Uh, I can change the power. I can turn them on and off from here. Um, other camera manufacturers have similar systems. Uh, this one works on a radio transmission, so I can hide flash guns. I don't need line of sight, and I get about 30 meters of range with it. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's what that's, this is, STE3RT. Yeah, and I, I saw you, uh, yeah, you can change uh, the settings on, on top of the camera then, doesn't it? So if you've got something that is, uh, like you said, out the way or out of reach, then you're able to uh, control that without actually going to the flash gun. Exactly, you don't need ridiculously long arms to touch something, or <laughs> if you put a flash up in a corner somewhere or you hide it as I did behind a chair on the floor, I didn't wanna to have to keep going around there to change things, I can do it all directly from the box on top of the camera. Fantastic, and uh, just the last question here, uh, probably more of a, a personal, uh, in which you prefer, uh, to, uh, what do you prefer using flash photography or ambient photography? Or I'm guessing, yeah, ambient light, that would be, yeah. Oh, um, that's, a, that's a tough question. I, I'm a big fan of flash. Um, I love light that I am 100% in control of. That said, um, you know, if you want to be a versatile photographer, you've got to be able to use both. And both can give fantastic results. You just need to think about them. I don't know if I have a favorite particularly. Um, uh, I think, no, oh, it's really tough. Maybe flash, <laughs> maybe flash on balance just because uh, I can sculpt a scene a lot more rather than just light coming through a window, which is lovely and you can work with that. With flash, I can put two or three flash guns up and I can entirely light a scene to give whatever look I'm trying to create. So maybe on balance, I'd say I prefer flash, but then I also shoot a lot of landscapes and I don't often use flash in landscapes. I do, um, but not very often. So yeah, both, it depends. Depends on the day of the week and the mood I'm in. <laughs> and um, we saw uh, when you started using the uh, the flash system as well that you you took that black image uh, showing that the only light coming onto the image was purely from the flash. Have you ever used uh, a bit of both? So mixing ambient with flash? Absolutely. I, I will. I mean, in this environment, I wouldn't do so much because the ambient light where I put Otis on that chair is is nothing special. There's not much to mix with. But I, I'm probably when I use flash most of the time, I'm mixing flash and ambient. Uh, and if you want, uh, in, in 30 seconds, the way to do that is very simple. Set your exposure for the ambient light. Take a picture as if you're not using flash. And then because actually the flash is only going to be what we would call fill-in flash, you don't need a lot of it. And then you can use your flash exposure compensation to go up or down to basically lighten your shadows or darken your shadows to suit the image that you're trying to create. So start with the background. Uh, in fact, as I said with the flash, start with the background, the ambient light, get that right, and then think flash is just for your subject. Because with the best will in the world, you're not gonna use flash to light a, an entire street or an entire landscape. Or if you're photographing a person outside, you're not gonna light all of the background with flash, you're gonna light them with the flash. So you use the ambient light to get the background how you want, and then you use the flash to light them. And remember that if you have, I'm just gonna put the camera down and pick something else up. If you have something white like this, uh, then the camera is gonna to want to underexpose it with flash. So you'd need to use positive flash exposure compensation. If however, you had something dark like this, the camera would want to overexpose it. So you would need to use negative flash exposure compensation. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to flash. 
That's brilliant. Well, it's uh, it's been lovely having you here, Dave, as, as always. Uh, it was a, a, a treat and an honor to, to have you back. Um, and also showing us how the R5 with the eye autofocus is uh, absolutely spot on uh, and how that works as well. And a uh, big thank you to Jess and Otis as well, which I I, <laughs> I don't think you could have done it with uh, without them too. <laughs> Well, I certainly couldn't have done it without Otis. Jess is debatable. So. <laughs> How would I do a pet photography thing without Otis? No, Jess, uh, yes, thank you very much to Jess and Otis. Obviously, Otis is, he's the star. Otis, can I get kisses? Otis, no. <laughs> Otis, kisses. Mwah. Good boy, thank you. Uh, yeah, he's the star of the show. Uh, and yeah, thank you to Jess for, uh, for being dog trainer extraordinaire. Yes, and uh, some views coming in live. So be uh, sure you by leaving the comments live. It's always nice uh, to see them. Um, and thank you very much for tuning in live, if you've tuned in live. Uh, this video is also available for rewatch as well. So you can go on to our uh, out on air. Start again. We can go on to our YouTube channel or Facebook page and rewatch this video anytime that you want to go through some of the techniques that Dave has taken us through. Uh, from me and Dave, uh, thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye bye for now. Thank you very much. <laughs>